Alright, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. This is Tessa. I'm shuffling the Zodiac Oracle right now to see who's going to be the next sign. So you already know. I don't know though. Uh, if you haven't watched my trailer for the next phase of videos, um, I posted the link below. It just kind of goes into what this next phase of videos is all about. Um, it's going to focus on the full moon lunar eclipse happening June 2020, where the full moon is in Sagittarius and the sun will be in Gemini. Okay, I decided to pull the zodiac signs at random instead of doing it like I did last time, which was per element. Okay, so I thought that this could be a little bit more fun. Fun way of doing things. So we're going to see who's next. Like I said, I have no idea as you watch me shuffle these cards. Okay, <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Also, um, uh, yeah, so I'm posting the trailer below about what this next phase of videos is going to be about. So what we're going to be doing in this reading, we're going to be focusing on what you should be focusing on. Okay, sounds kind of redundant, but with the full moon lunar eclipse coming up, there's actually going to be two more lunar eclipse eclipses this summer. And full moons already intensify the energy around us, so lunar eclipse is only going to magnify that even more. And with the full moon being in Sagittarius, we're going to be uh, shedding kind of like old ways of um, thinking, like old ways of believing and um, being guided by like these like deeper rooted philosophies and paradigms that aren't serving us anymore. Okay. Um, and then with Gemini being in the sun, Gemini is all about communication. It's all about uh, community, local activities and you know, really tying, um, getting more, getting on a deeper level with those that you feel a kindred spirit with. Okay. And aside from the fact that we're in Gemini right now, we are also um, in the north node of Gemini until January 18th, 2022, um, with the south node being in Sagittarius. So collectively, we're going through this process of focusing more on communication, focusing more on information, how we process information, how we receive it, and then how we communicate back to the world. Okay, and then forming like tighter, for, forming tighter relationships, uh, focusing on local travel and community. Okay, so this is going to be happening for the next year and a half. All right, let's see who we got. Aries, Aries, what's up fire sign? My fellow fire sign. All right, let's get to your reading. All right, so you guys are number three. I kind of like doing it this way, like at random. Because, I don't know, I'm a Sagittarius, so like, Anything that I can do that makes things feel a little spontaneous and adventurous and um, things like that is always kind of fun for me, you know? So, yeah, so Aries, what's going on, you guys? Happy belated birthday. All right, what does Aries need to be focusing on for the full moon lunar eclipse? And I'm going to be pulling an oracle card at the very end of the reading, right after the final outcome from the Animal Spirit Oracle. Just as a little something extra, a little extra piece of, you know, guidance from the Animal Spirit world. Something else that you could think about, something else that you can do to help yourself along on your journey through this full moon. All right. Let me tell you, I'm already feeling the effects of this whole moon. Things are, things are, things have already been kind of crazy around here. Things have already been a little crazy around here. I love these cards so much. They're so like slinky. They feel like those metal slinkies just not connected in one long spiral. Or is it connected? It kind of is like a spiral tarot cards, aren't they? Kind of connected like from the universe. Like, they connect to each other. Okay, I'm just rambling now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Slinky spiral. Slinky spiral. I just had a gigantic, gigantic cup of coffee. And when I say gigantic, I mean gigantic. That's a big, that's a big mug. I love um, Nightmare Before Christmas, so. I always have a really big cup of coffee in the morning. Okay, it's ready. Do 
Do, 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 do. All right, Aries for the full moon. Lunar eclipse. June 5th, 2020. <clears throat> okay. Um, so for your underlying energy, you have the Six of Pentacles. This is Moon and Taurus, okay? So this card talks about being in a, like, in a financially stable um, situation to where you can give to others, to where you can uplift others. Okay. So... With this being your underlying energy, I'm feeling like maybe you are in a position where you have the ability to give to others. Maybe you feel obligated to help others, um, but uh, maybe you don't want to, or you don't know if you should or you don't know who you should help and how much help you should give, okay? Okay, so this is something that's just kind of like either in your subconscious or something that you're feeling, but it's not quite to the surface. It's kind of just, it's like marinating within you. <laughs> And like I said, maybe you don't know who to give. Maybe you don't know what to give. Maybe you don't know which direction to go, you know, but it's like you have something to give. You have, you have something that you can contribute and help to where it's going to help somebody else. Okay. Or something else. Or help a situation out. As your motivational card, uh, you have the Seven of Cups. This is Venus and Scorpio. And this is about kind of having your head in the clouds in terms of not, like, trying to decide what to choose. Okay, so this guy's looking at all these different cups. And he's like, huh, which one do I think? But you're also kind of, it's also kind of looking at things from a more fantasy element. It's almost like seeing the illusion of things and not so much the reality of things. So... It's almost, it's almost as if you're, you're trying to make a decision about something that you don't have the full, you don't have like the full, all the information about these individual options yet. It's like you're it's like you're trying to make a choice based off of just some concept of it. Or you're trying to make a choice based off of a like an illusion of that thing. And it's like you're thinking about all these different things, but it's kind of cloudy. It's a little cloudy. It's like you're you're motivated to make a choice. You're motivated to see things. I think you want to see things more clearly. I think you want to see things more clearly. But you also know that seeing things, trying to see things more clearly means that you kind of have to get to the bottom of those individual things. I don't know if you want to do the work to like get to the bottom of each individual thing because it's a lot of things. There's a lot of different there's a lot of different options for you. There's a lot of different things that you're thinking about and that you're needing to make a choice on, but it's it's kind of cloudy. Okay, you're not... Yeah, okay. So what you're feeling disheartened by, you have the Three of Swords, and this is Saturn and Libra. I think that... I think that this this choice that you have to make, it's like kind of breaking you down or it's like making you, it's like hurt, it's hurting you. It's making you feel sad. It's 
it's it's almost like by you um thinking so much about this it's making you feel defeated or like maybe you're afraid of making the wrong choice like if you make the wrong choice it's going to lead to heartbreak or or just generally speaking like you're feeling you're feeling really defeated it's almost like Okay, because okay, because this is the planet of Saturn in Libra. Saturn is about the outside world. It's about ambition and work. Um, Saturn is about um, like social status, so um, and developing like work. You know how you make money in the world, things like that. So I'm thinking that. You almost feel like maybe the world is kind of like forcing you to make these, to think about these things. It's like the world is forcing you to think about these things, to think about all your different options. And you're just like, well, I, it's just kind of like a daydream at the moment. It's like, they're not really solid options because there's no foundation in them yet or you can't see the stability in them at the moment you can't see the stability in them at the moment okay and i think that i think that you're feeling like you are being required to think about them Especially with sword energy. Sword energy is all mental. Okay, it's all about things that you think about. So, man, Aries. You guys are like really in your head too. But you're, you're like going between the fantasy of a thought and like the, the intellect part. Of it as well it's kind of like you're because these are water this is a water element this is an air element okay let's let's keep going we'll tie it all together at the end <laughs> um, outside influences uh, you have the page of cups um, page of cups is um, Pisces Cancer, Scorpio. And pages are all students. Pages are, you know, they're, they have kind of like an innocent way of going about things. You know, they're very, they're kind of timid. They're open to learning. They're open to experiencing. They're open to growing. But I kind of see this as maybe for an outside influence, I, there could be somebody Someone is offering their feelings to you, and that could be what's kind of leading you down this road. Like, should you give, should you give yourself to this person? Should you give your feelings to this person? And if this person isn't actually offering their feelings to you, you could feel that in your surrounding energy. I, I kind of see this as like, this person is already kind of in your energy. This person is already kind of in your world. And maybe they've already expressed their feelings to you or they already, you already, they're like kind of there and, but they still kind of carry this quality about them that's a little like, oh, do you love me, Aries? You know, like, I don't know, like maybe insecure. You know, I kind of see this as somebody who might be a little insecure around you or in general. And maybe you don't really know, like, you don't know if you should, you don't know if you should give your energy to this. You know, things are kind of cloudy for you. And it could also be because things might be cloudy for that person and you're picking up on their energy. Remember, energies are interchangeable. Um, yeah, but I kind of feel like you're... It's like you're being influenced by it, but you don't really know what to do. 
you don't know how to go about it. Um, in your advice position, you have the Seven of Swords. This is uh, Moon and Aquarius. All right, and Seven of Swords is very... I see this with your advice being don't run away from the problem. Don't like take some kind of action towards it and then run the opposite way or don't like um, don't kind of like be a coward or don't be um, sneaky you know don't be sneaky or don't you know maybe you're giving Maybe you're giving to this situation for the wrong reasons. You know, maybe you're giving to this situation for the wrong reasons. And the universe is telling you to stop doing that. <laughs> They're like, stop it. <laughs> Just stop. Stop doing that. Um, you need to face it. You need to face it. Okay, that's your advice. That's what you should be focusing on. It's like facing, facing this, facing this situation. Okay. Don't run away. Gotta face your problems. Head on. All right. Um, the best way to move forward from your worries, you have the page of swords. You got two pages here. Like I said, pages, they're about, um, they're very studious, you know, they're eager to learn new things. Um, they're students at life. They're just beginning on their journey. They're just beginning on their journey towards their desired destination. Um, now this page, page of swords, you know, the swords are all, sword air energy is all about the intellect, the mind, they're very mental. He looks like a young scientist to me. He looks like a young scientist. He's like looking at this little bubble over here and he's like, wow, like what's that? How does that work? Like, like thinking about physics and chemistry and it's almost like he's creating his own little like potion down here, you know? So the best way to move forward from your worries, I feel, is to have a sense of curiosity. Maybe you don't have to think so much about the different options and all these different things and daydreams, but have more. Okay, so this card is about thinking about those options, where he has a curiosity about it. He's curious. So if you, I feel like the universe is kind of like nudging you to like to have like a childlike sense of wonder and curiosity like oh hmm you know like well what if I do this or what if I do that you know and like maybe get a little bit more information about those different options so have a childlike sense of wonder that is the best way to move forward from this energy of like wanting to run away. Have a childlike sense of wonder. Because having a childlike sense of wonder is not gonna, it's not about anxiety. It's not about those feeling, those adult feelings that we feel like anxious and oh, I'm so overwhelmed and I have to do this and I have to do that. But no, but like, it's more about like, oh, like this innocent sense of wonder, you know, you're just learning something for the first time. You're just discovering something for the first time and you're curious about it. How does it work? What is it doing? You know, like be like, let yourself be kind of like inspired by it. Like let it bring joy to you, that, that curiosity. Okay. Um, the best way to move forward in a positive light. Um, you have the five of swords. This is Venus and Aquarius. Okay, so <sighs> I 
Okay. Five of Swords is, um, you have Aquarius here, Aquarius here. Okay, so you got sword energy. You got a lot of sword energy in here. A couple of air. I'm sorry. Um, a couple of water elements and a couple of earth elements. No, which is interesting. You know, there's no fire elements in here. There's no fire elements in here. So there's a lot of different energies going on. There's a lot of different energies going on, okay? So um, the Five of Swords uh, for the Venus and Aquarius, this is about, as a card, as an individual card, it talks about claiming victory, like winning at a game or winning at a war or winning in a situation, but not with good intentions, like not with a happy heart not with a sense of like integrity in what you have just accomplished like you won but it was sneaky you claimed victory but it was um, done kind of immorally so with this in the position of with this in this position We need to look a little bit more into this, the Three of Swords, okay? And why you're feeling, why you're feeling like, what has done you wrong? Why you're feeling like the world has done you wrong? Or like, why you're feeling hurt and pained over the circumstances of your life right now? So we need to, you need to take a closer look at that. Um, in order to, in order to move past the situation and take it on with this like curiosity, like you need to go a little bit deeper into like what you're feeling heartbroken over and why you're feeling pained. Okay. Why is your heart in pain? Because if you don't, if you don't work on that, and if you don't go into that, I feel like any victory you claim in the future, uh, it's not going to be with a healed heart. It's not going to be with like a, you know, like you might take action more out of revenge, or you might take action more out of a sense of, you know, injustice, like I've felt pain. So I don't care if I hurt somebody else. Okay, and with this being a Venus, Venus in, in Aquarius, because um, Venus is all about love and beauty and everything, it, it, with Venus in Aquarius, this is about a more, this is about love and beauty and like the things that bring you joy but in a social sense in like um because Aquarius is all about social change and the future and progressive thinking and kind of like reformation so I feel like what is hurting you is kind of like it's almost like you feel like a deeper sense of it being not just a particular person that is hurting you or has hurt you in the past, but it's, it's like you, you're taking on, um, it's like you feel like the whole, not the whole world has done this to you, but like you feel like almost like Almost like it's society's fault that you can't, that you get heartbroken. I don't think, I don't know if that's making sense. Um, what's the best way to explain this? Um, I 
I don't know, like almost like like you don't feel like you are in control of your own heart or you don't feel like you are in control of love. You know, there's so, because when we fall in love or when we are in love or when we feel love with somebody, a relationship is still affected by outside influences. A relationship is still affected by work, by the everyday routine, by the things that we're involved in, by the people we're involved in, by the society, by their your partner's friends, by your friends. Like there's so much that goes, that can be affecting that relationship and that in turn can affect your wounds and your heart and like how what you're feeling heartbroken over and like what particular was making you feel pain so I'm just kind of I'm just seeing this as I'm just seeing this as you needing to heal your heart like you needing to go into your heart you needing to go into your heart and to figure out like what is bringing pain what is bringing pain into your heart okay and work on that with yourself okay um your final outcome card is a good card like your final outcome card is a good card so if you can do that if you can go into your heart and kind of like feel that pain and look at it a little bit closer okay a little bit deeper you'll be able to kind of take on this new situation and kind of open your heart up step by step, like baby steps to a child, like sense of wonder, like a, coming from a pure place. Because you do want to give, I think you do want to give your heart. And even though this is like a pentacles, I almost see this as like giving, um, cause this is about giving. But I think that you do want to give you know, you want to give yourself or a piece of yourself. Okay. But you have to like, you have to go within, you have to look deeper, you have to heal your heart and you have to be open to taking those babe, those like more innocent kind of baby steps towards the idea of love and giving by being curious, like childlike curiosity sense of wonder. I don't want to be like too repetitive. So, okay. So we're going to go into your final outcome. We just had to figure that out. All right. We just had to figure all that out. Um, so your final outcome, you have the two of pentacles and this is Jupiter and Capricorn. And, um, she's juggling these two things, but she's like, she's happy. She's kind of like, okay, I can do this. She's like, I can do this. And the way that I see these two different things, I see these two different things as being healing yourself going within your own heart. And this other thing is like taking on this situation that you're in to make a choice or to like go towards this other thing, you know, or it could be, it could be juggling like your inner self with your outer self or like your inner self with a person. But I almost see it as like juggling, juggling like your inner self with your outer self. And so and so bringing forth this joyful quality, this kind of like fire quality that you already have within you, kind of like, like uh, showing the world this more, you know, um, more aware, like just like fun, loving, innocent, um, joyous quality while still, while still healing your heart within and while still kind of like hanging out to these things, you know, and you know, like this card talks about like maybe it's a little bit stressful but it's really not that bad it's really not that bad nothing you can't handle okay like pretty almost like easy peasy okay um so this is great this is this is a good outcome you know um so i see you kind of taking those steps to juggle to juggle those two things um okay so you can heal within and act without all right, Aries, I'm going to pull a card from the Spirit Animal Oracle for you. There's an extra little something for you to think about. Just, in, you know, a little extra message, 
a little message from the animal spirit oracle for you. to see these <laughs> a rebirth is assured bat spirit a rebirth is assured okay and I'm gonna read what it says oh I don't have them all memorized but I love these Where's my little book? okay read this for you um after something has run its course and died or been released Finished, surrendered, completed, or ended, there is a promise of a new beginning. Rebirth is assured just as night gives way to dawn and the bat emerges from the darkness of a womb-like cave. Bat spirit has come to remind you that this rebirth is a miraculous one. For the very best elements of what you had to give up in the death of the old are still present in this new amazing life forming now. This is the miracle and magic of rebirth in every aspect of your life, including the rebirth of faith and your ability to establish new and healthy relationships. That spirit reminds you that at present you are in unknown territory and may feel as if you are lost. However, you are called to trust that your intuition will be a reliable guide as you give birth to something new and unfamiliar. That spirit has listened in the darkness of night and has heard all your hopes and dreams your fears and worries, and assures you that this new version of your dream, this move from darkness into light, from loss to found, and death to rebirth, comes to fruition with love at its core. That spirit asks you to trust that what seems to have died is actually shape-shifting into something even more meaningful and wondrous than before. If you feel you are in the dark, know that come morning, all will be revealed, and things will be in a new form that is right for you. That was awesome. I got like chills a little bit, a little bit. Um, all right, Aries, that's what I have for you. I hope this helped. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye.